Okay, in this video, we will be covering the unit one review. So let's look at number one. So number one on the review says multiply the polynomials and it has three X, X squared minus four X plus one. And so since it's a monomial, a one termed polynomial, times a trinomial, which is a three-term polynomial, all we need to do is distribute. So we'll distribute this three X to all three terms. We get three X to the third minus 12 X squared and plus three X. And that's all they asked you to do. So we are done. And next problem is number two, perform the operation and write the result in standard form. So we got 1.5 T squared plus five times a negative seven T. So now we have a binomial, two terms, times a monomial, one term. So similarly, we're going to distribute the monomial. So we'll multiply it to the 1.5 first. 1.5 times seven, that's going to give me a negative 10.5. T squared times T will be T cubed. And then five times negative seven is negative 35. No t's times a t will give us just t. Again, that's the only directions was to multiply it and put it in standard form since the exponents do decrease, right? The highest one is in the front and the next one is smaller exponent. This is in standard form. Number three says, perform the, the operation and write the result in standard form. So very similarly, we have a monomial times a binomial. So we're going to take the monomial and distribute it. So then I get 30 by minus, let's see, there, six times three over eight is nine fourths. So we have nine fourths y squared. However, this is not in standard form. The term with the highest exponent is negative nine four y squared. So this positive 30 y will go behind it. And now it's in its standard form. Number four is three x minus six times two x minus seven. So it says to multiply the polynomials. This is a binomial times a binomial. So we first have to distribute the first term, then we'll have to distribute the second term. So for the first term, we get six X squared minus 21 X. Then when I distribute the negative six, I will get um, negative 12 X and positive 42. Then if I combine my like terms here, I get six X squared minus 33 X plus 42. And this is in standard form. The exponents of X go from two, one, none. And let's go, or two, one, and then zero. Number five, multiply the polynomials. So very similar to the binomial times the binomial, we're gonna take each term in the first parentheses and distribute it to every term in the second parentheses. And then eventually the one. Okay, so let's see what we get here. I'm going to need the whole line. So x squared times x squared, x squared times x, 
x squared times nine, negative x times x squared, negative x times positive x, negative x times positive nine, and then one times each of these two terms, each of those three terms. And so then we'll combine our like terms. Let's see, these will cancel and these will cancel. So we'll have positive nine x squared um, minus eight x and then plus nine. And this is in its standard form, highest exponent. There's no x cubes, but you have x squared, x, and then your constants. And see for the sniffles. Okay, number six. We've got two x plus eight times two x minus eight. So another binomial times a binomial. So we're gonna distribute the two x and then we'll distribute the positive eight. We get four x squared minus 16 x plus 16 x minus 64. These two terms do cancel, leaving us with four x squared minus 64. And that's it, that's in standard form, so it's good. Number seven, we have five minus eight x and with a square. So we have to remember that we cannot square terms individually. So we must rewrite this as five minus eight x times another five minus eight x. And then we'll do our distributing. So first distribute the five, then distribute the negative eight x. And then these two terms in the middle do match. They're like terms. So we get 25 minus 80x plus 64x squared. Now this one does not say that the answer has to be in standard form. So you could type this in there as an answer, but if you wanted to put it in standard form, it would be positive 64x squared, then the negative 80x, and then the positive 25. And now it's in standard form. Okay, great. We got seven problems marked out on one page. Let's see what we get for number eight. Okay. So here we have six Z cubed minus 12z squared plus 18z. Mm. So here it's asking us to factor out the common factor. So we always have to remember we have to take the greatest common factor, not just any common factor. So for this particular problem, I notice that I can divide all of these by two and I can divide them all by three. However, that also means I can divide them all by six. So I do need to take out the largest of those three factors, which is six, and they all do have at least one Z. So I'm gonna factor out a six Z. Then six Z times Z squared will give me six Z cubed. 6z times a minus 2z will give me negative 12z squared. And 6z times a positive 3 will give me 18z. And so I have factored out the common factor. So this problem is done. It may be possible that I could factor this more, but that is not what the directions ask me to do. So here it says factor out the common factor. And I notice that there's no number in common. 
and you have an X here, but you don't have an X outside of the parentheses here, but you do have this parentheses X minus five in common. So if I factor that out, parentheses X minus five times three X will give me three X times X minus five. And then parentheses X minus five times plus five will give me plus five times X minus five. And so I have factored that out successfully and that's all they asked us to do. So here it says factor completely the difference of two squares. We do always have to remember we must factor out the greatest common factor first before we start using our formulas. So in this case, I notice both those could be divided by two. And then that leaves me with 25 minus 9z squared. And now this fits the um, difference of two squares because 25 is 5 squared and 9z squared is 3z squared. So I know that this will factor into the 2 on the outside. And then this parentheses will factor into two more parentheses. So 5 plus 3z and then five minus z. And this is the final factorization. These have no exponents and they have nothing in common. So they are factored completely and you must include your GCF from the very beginning. We have two fifty-six u to the fourth minus one. So I believe this is a difference of squares as well, with one being one squared. I know I'll have to have u squared, but I'm not sure about 256. So let me take the square root of 256 and I get 16. So apparently 16 squared is 256. Yes, so that's what I'm going to use in the parentheses, which means it will factor into 16u squared minus 1 and then 16u squared plus 1. Okay. However, this is still a difference of two squares. So it can continue to factor further. And this is a sum of two squares, which we know cannot factor. Okay. So we know this factor will not factor further, but this one can. So this is going to be um, 4u squared and 1 squared. So we get 4u minus 1 and then 4u plus 1. And this is the final factorization. Although this has an exponent, we know that the sum of two squares can't be factored anymore. These two don't have exponents and they don't have anything else in common. So we do know that this is completely factored. Okay, so here it says factor the perfect square trinomial. So since I do have a number in the front of this trinomial, I am going to do the AC method. So 49 times 9 is 441. And then if I take the square root of 441, I get um, 21. So we would need to go down this list to 21. Now I'll go as far as I need to before I run into negative 42. Okay, and so then we would say 40, 441 divided by one is this, two will not go into it evenly, so neither will any other even number. So I already cut my list in half. But now let's start working with the odds. So 441 divided by three is 147. Now, if I add or subtract these two values, I do not get 42. And it's actually add. 
So if I add these two guys, I do not get 42. Then I do not get 42 here. Um, I know five will not work. Number seven, well, 41 divided by seven is 63. These also were getting closer, but those do not add to give me 42. 441 divided by nine is 49. Again, closer, but not quite there. 441 divided by 11 is a decimal. 441 divided by 13 is a decimal. 441 divided by 15, I'm pretty sure is a decimal. Yep. 441 divided by 17, a decimal. 441 divided by 19, a decimal. And 441 divided by 21. Oops. Typo is 21. Now these two, when I add them, I do get 42. So those are gonna be my magic numbers. Now the middle sign gives me the sign of the larger column. So I know that one of the 21s will be negative. However, in order for me to get a positive 441, the smaller column will also have to be negative. So that means both 21s will be negative. So when I split this, it'll be 49u squared minus 21u minus 21u plus nine. And those two do um, combine to give me negative 42. So this line is equivalent to that line. Then if I group here, um, this side can have, it has a U in common and both of the numbers can be divided by seven. So I end up with seven in the U minus three. Here I have to bring down my minus sign and these two numbers can both be divided by three, but there's no U here on the nine. So I cannot take out a U. So all I can take out is a negative three. So negative 21 U times a positive seven U and a negative three will give me this. Then negative three times another negative three will give me positive nine. These two do match. So they have that in common. And what I'm left with is seven U from the front there, minus three from the front here. And when they match, it's just coincidence they match, but when they do, you just have to write it once with a square. Okay, number 13. So this one says x cubed minus 729. I see this is a difference of cubes. Let's see what is the cube root of 729. It is nine. So this is obviously x cubed and this is nine cubed. So we already know the formula on how this is gonna factor x and nine and the middle sign stays exactly the same. Then you have x times x, which is x squared. And then whatever that sign is, this one is the opposite. Then x times nine, which is nine x. The last sign will always be positive. And then you have nine times nine, which is 81. And you do not need to worry about factoring this if it could have factored, the formula would have had it factored already. But this cannot be factored further. There's no factors of 81 that are gonna add to give you nine. Nine is too small for all these factors. Okay, so let's keep going. 14. 14 is very similar to 13. So I don't think that they have anything in common. And I do think that 343 is a perfect cube. It is, it's seven cubed. So we already know that this is nine and a T being cubed, and this is a seven being cubed, okay? So when we have that, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the nine T in the front, whatever symbols in the middle that goes here, and then the seven. 
Then in the other parentheses, we're going to have 9t times 9t, which is 81t squared. Then if this one's a plus, the next one's a minus. We'll have 9t times 7, which is 63t. The last sign is always plus. Then you have 7 times 7, which is 49. Again, do not try to factor that trinomial, otherwise the formula would have been different. Okay, that trinomial, after using the difference or sum of cubes formulas, will never ever factor, ever. Okay, so once you use that formula, don't try to factor it. Um, okay, so it looks like we have another seven problems on the sheet of paper. Let's go to the next one. So let's see. Number nine. Um, or not number nine, I'm on number 15. What was I thinking? So we have t squared minus t minus 90. Now there is only a one in the front. So when I do my AC method, I have negative 90. Um, the square root of 90 is um, nine point something. So we're gonna go to nine. Okay, and then let's see, we get one times 90, two times 45, three times 34. I think it's times 16, but I'm not sure. No, it's a decimal. Um, 90 divided by five is 18. 90 divided by six, I think I can already see what the answer is going to be. Oh, decimal and 10. And so we're looking for the ones that are going to give us a negative one. Now this sign in the middle is gonna tell me the signs of the larger numbers. But in order for me to get a negative when I multiply, that means that the smaller common would have to be positives. Okay, so when I combine these with the signs and everything, it looks like these factors are going to combine to give me that negative one. So what I'm gonna do is I would originally split this into 9t, positive 9t minus 10t, and then do the grouping. But when you don't have a number in the front, you can shortcut to the answer. It will literally just be the variable in the front, t times t to give me t squared, and then one of them with the plus nine and one of them with that minus 10, okay? Now you can check that by distributing it out and combining our like terms, but this is the factorization for number 15. Now number 16. We've got some bigger numbers there, but I am going to continue with the EC methods. So 7 times negative 36 is a negative 252. And the square root of 252 is 15 point something. So we're going to take our list and go to 15. And so we'll start the process. That's going to be 252. 252 divided by 2 is 126. 252 divided by 3 oops, is 84. 252 divided by 4 is 63. 5 will not go evenly into it. But for six, I will get 42. Um, I think I already see the, the answer. 
because I know that the bigger column is going to be positive. But in order for me to get a negative when I multiply, that means that the smaller column will have to be negative. Okay. And I can keep going. I just don't know what the right side, the rest of the numbers are. But I don't need to because I noticed that these two right here do combine to give me 59. Okay. A negative four plus 63 will give me a negative 59. Now, in this problem, I do have a number other than one in the front. So I do need to split the middle term and do it the grouping. So 7x squared stays the same, but the 59x will turn into negative 4x plus 63x. And then the minus 36 will come down. I will group these two. These guys only having an x in common. So 7x minus 4 is left. Bring down the plus sign. Um, this side has, um, I think, 9. And the reason why I'm thinking 9 is because I know I need to end up with a 7x minus 4. And I thought to myself, well, what times 7 and what times 4 will give me these two numbers? And it turns out that it's 9. Okay. And then these two sides have the 7x minus 4 in common, leaving me with the x on the outside and the plus 9 on the outside for the second factor. And this is the final factorization. Now, number 17 is negative 8y squared minus 35y plus 25. Okay, for this problem, um, we do have a major issue. And that is that when we go to do the very first step, which is to um, determine your GCF, even though there's no variable in common because this term does not have a variable and there's no number that all three of these factors can be divided by evenly, um, there is still a GCF that must be taken out and it's this negative in the front, okay? So I must take out that negative. When I do, it's gonna become positive eight y squared, positive 35 y, and then a negative 25. Now I do still need to factor what is in the parentheses if possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and do positive eight times a negative 25, and I get negative 200. And if I take the square root of 200, I get 14. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I don't think this one's going to work, but let me double check just in case. Nope, that does not. Um, Okay, none of these numbers work. Excuse me. So we know that the middle sign is a plus, so the bigger column is going to be plus. And in order for me to get a negative, it means I would have to subtract the smaller numbers or use negatives, right? And then we want to see if any of these will give us 35. And it looks like this group will give us 35. So 
There is a number in the front, so we are going to have to split this 35. Now, I'm ignoring the negative for now because it's outside of the parentheses. However, in my final answer, I do have to include that negative. Otherwise, I'll never get this original problem as a result. Okay. So let's go ahead and just cover that up for now. We have 8y squared, and then we're going to use minus 5y plus 40y so that when we combine these two, we get the 35y. Then I'm going to split this. And if you want, you can just keep this and then bring the negative out in the front, but just kind of ignore it. It's just there in the front, okay? What you're factoring is what's inside. So these two guys have a y in common, and that leaves me with 8y minus 5. I have to bring down my plus sign. If I want this to also be 8y minus 5, I need to figure out what should it be multiplied by. And it seems like a 5. 5 times 8 is 40. 5 times 5 is 25. So keeping that minus in the front, if I factor out this 8y minus 5 that the two sides have in common, I'm left with y plus 5. And now there's no need for these brackets because the inside is now completely factored. So your final answer will look like this. You just cannot forget about that negative. Otherwise, when you multiply this out, you only get positive 8y squared and not the negative 8y squared. So that negative from the very beginning GCF does have to be included in your final answer. Okay, all of these trinomials that make me do these numbers, I couldn't fit seven of them on the page. So let's keep going with another page. Now, number... We're on 18. So on number 18, we have 9x cubed plus x squared minus 27x minus 3. And so this one says factor by grouping. Well, that's no big deal. We've been doing that, right? So these two guys actually have an x squared in common, which means I'll have 9x times x squared give me 9x cubed and x squared times 1 to give me that x squared. Then here, um, if I want to end up with 9x plus 1, what should be in the front? Uh, it looks like a 3, right? 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 9 is 27. Um, let's see. Negative 3 times this is negative. Negative 3 times that is negative. OK, good. So then if we take out the 9x plus 1 in common, we're left with x squared minus 3. Now, although um, this is a difference of squares for here, this is not a perfect square. So for now, you wouldn't factor that any further. You would just leave it like that, OK? We do know that over the real numbers, it can be factored more. It would just be x minus the square root of 3 and then x plus the square root of 3, OK? but. Um, when we're factoring, most times we're factoring over um, the integers, okay? And so then we don't particularly factor that any further, okay? So let's keep going with number 19. And let's scroll here. We have 8x squared minus 72. So it wants me to factor this completely. The first thing I need to do is factor out the common factor, which is 8. And then this is the difference of two squares. So we get um, x minus 3 and x plus 3. And my pen is starting to run out of ink. Okay, let's try the clean pen instead. Looks like I'm gonna have to be buying pens soon now. My pens are running out of ink. I'm barely three weeks in the semester. Okay, um, 
So yay, that's done then. We've got all the factors and that no exponents and nothing in common in, inside each of these factors. So we'll move on to number 20. Now this one says solve the quadratic equation by factoring. So then if I factor what they have in common always first, I end up with 3x plus 1. And then always double check that when you distribute, you do get the original. And then from there, I'm going to use that zero factor property, which tells me that this factor has to equal zero or this factor has to equal zero. And so then if I solve each of these individual um, equations, I get that x equals zero or x equals negative one third. And so these are my solutions. Now number 21. So this is a trinomial. Um, and so I can factor it by the grouping method and you don't even need to reorder it, but you could. If you wanted to reorder it, you could reorder it. And then the positive seven, but then there's an issue. You have this negative in the front, okay? So if you, we're not, we can't have that negative um, if we wanna start doing the AC method. It's supposed to be positive before we continue. So in order to do that, what we can do is we can just divide every single term by negative one, and it will turn that three x squared positive, but it would also change all the other signs. And zero divided by anything is still zero, okay? So the, and this is the same as if you had moved over, that would become positive. You move that over, it would have become negative. And if you move the seven over, it would have become negative, okay? So whether you rearranged them and divided by negative one, or you just move them all to the other side, you still get this expression equals zero. It just may be that the equal zero part is over here on this side. Um, but if we keep going with our AC method, three times negative seven is negative 21. And the square root of 21 is, and I apologize, my voice has been going in and out, um, but I gotta make do with what I have. So we go only go down to four, which is nice. So we have 21, two will not go into that, seven will, but not four. And then we want the combination that will give us 20. It looks like it'll be the top though. <clears throat> excuse me, since the middle term is negative, the bigger column will be negative. And then in order to get a negative when I multiply, the little column will have to be positive. And it does turn out that the top combination will work. So we're gonna split this. It's gonna be a positive one X and a negative 21 X. And you can keep the equal zero there. Then I'm gonna group this side. So they have an X in common, which leaves me with three X plus one. I have to bring down the minus. And then what do I need to multiply by so I can have three X plus one in here again? It looks like a seven. Negative seven times three X is negative 21 X. Negative seven times positive one is a negative seven. So that is factored completely. I can factor out the common three X plus one, and I'll be left with the X minus seven in the outsides. Um, and then I can use that zero factor property. So this factor has to equal zero or this factor has to equal zero. So if I minus one over, I get three X equal to negative one. And if I divide by three, I get X equals negative one third. Here, if I add seven over to the other side, I get X equals positive seven. So in here, my solutions are negative one third and seven. Now you can check all of these answers. You could check your factoring by multiplying it out and see if you get what you were given. 
And for those equations, you could plug those numbers in for x, see if you get zero, then plug in the other number for all the x's and see if you get zero. Okay, so we are now on number what? Number 21. No, we just did 21, so we're on 22. And it looks like we're only like about halfway through this thing. So let's keep going. How many problems are there total? Your test questions do come from this review, which is why there's so many problems because that way you don't know which ones I'm gonna pick. <laughs> um, but if you can do all of these problems successfully, you should be fine on the test. Um, okay, where was I, 22? It looks like there's 40, 49 questions, almost 50, almost 50. So, and the test usually have somewhere between, anywhere between 10 and 20 questions. It just depends on how long the questions take. That determines how long, how many questions will be on the test. I usually try to make the test um, so that you can take it in an hour, sometimes an hour and a half. Um, and then I, as an instructor, should be able to do it in three times less amount of time. So essentially what I do is I create a test, I take it, and I time myself. And I write everything out nice and neat. I take my time. I'm not rushing through it. Because if I rush through it, I could probably take your tests, every single test for this class, personally. And I'm not trying to, like, show off or anything. I just am a fast person when it comes to math. Once I already know the answer, I just go there. Um, and again, a lot of experience and a lot of practice, right? That's why I have that ability. It's not just because I'm a genius. It's because I've been doing a million of these things all my life, okay? Um, but I can take your test in probably about 10 minutes, every single test, no matter how many questions are there. I think the final exam has like 25 questions and it took me less than 10 minutes to take that final exam. Um, so <laughs> instead of just taking it like I would as a student where once I know the answer, I just type in the answer, I do not take your test that way when I'm timing myself. I will literally sit there and write every single step and write the whole solution and then take my time. And that time is what I will use to multiply by three. So if I can take your test by writing every single step out as if I were teaching how to do the test, each problem on the test, kind of like the lectures and like this review. Um, if I do that, the chances are um, once I get to 20 minutes, that's when I stop because I want you guys to be able to do that within an hour. If I'm doing a 90 minute test, then if I can take it in 30 minutes by being super elaborate with my explanations, um, then that would be used for your 90 minute tests, okay? Um, so that's how the tests are determined. That is the department standard. Every now and then, if it's a super difficult content, um, I will multiply my times my time by five, just because I know that students are not as fast as I am. But theoretically, students are supposed to be able to do this work within three times the amount of time that it would take your instructor to do this work, okay? And that's super important because some of you guys are gonna do this stuff faster than me. Some of you guys are gonna do it about the same speed as me, but then some of you guys are gonna do it slower than me. The idea is, is that you all are going to be in the STEM field somewhere, whether you're gonna be computer science, engineering, physics, um, anything, anything in that science realm, math majors. Um, and, and these are skills that you just kind of want to know how to do quickly because these parts are going to be like the baby steps in your pre-cal and your calculus and above, okay? So this stuff that we're doing is so minuscule compared to everything else that you'll learn eventually, okay? And so you do want to learn 
to be faster at it. But I'm not going to waste any more <laughs> video time doing this, saying all this stuff. It's probably stuff you've already heard or already know. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and continue this problem with 22. It says solve the quadratic by factoring. So I'm going to multiply the 1 times the 9. I get 9. Square root of 9 is 3. So we have these factors, and the biggest one needs to be a positive, right? But in order for me to get a positive 9 when I multiply, these would also have to be positive. And the one that's going to give me a positive 6 is this group. Um, however, let me see, let me turn on this light. Oh, that looks so much better. I forgot about that light. Okay. So once we know that this works, we're, we don't need to split it because there's no number in front, right? So we can just write x plus 3 times x plus 3. And we already mentioned whenever, um, well, this is factoring. So what I was going to say is you could write it x plus 3 squared equal to 0. But when you do that, then you have to start extracting roots. And that is not what the directions told us to do. So I am not going to write it like that. Instead, I'm just going to go into the zero factor property. This one has to equal zero, or this one has to equal zero. So if I minus three, I get negative three. And if I minus three, I get negative three. It's the same answer. So negative three is the only solution. OK, now number 23. So we have 4x squared plus 12x plus 9 equals 0. Um, there's no GCF that I can factor out at the very beginning. So we're going to go ahead and go to the AC method. A times C is 36. The square root of 36 is 6. So we have 36. We have 18. We have 12. We have nine, that one does not work, and six. Um, the bigger column will be positives. And in order to get a positive 36, that means that the smaller column will have to also be positive. And we want to get 12. And so we do see that this pair will give us that 12. And we do have a number in front, so I do need to split this. It'll be 4x squared plus 6x plus 6x plus nine equal to zero. If I group this, these two guys have a two and an x in common. So I get two x plus three, bring down the plus sign. This side has a three in common, which gives me two x plus three. So the two x plus threes match, but my leftovers also happen to be a two x plus three. And so then I'll use that zero factor property to set one factor equal to zero and the other factor equal to zero. If I minus three over, I get these equations. And then if I divide both sides by two, I get these equations. And so it's a repeated solution. So negative three halves is my only solution. So you see how fast that can go but I am writing down all of the steps. Now, I personally can go from here to here without having to do all this stuff, okay? And so that's what I meant by, I could probably take the test in 10 minutes because I would have written down this line, this line, and then this, and that's it. It's all I would have written down. Um, but as an instructor, I have to go through all of the steps that are happening in my brain, okay? And that's what I mean by when I work out your test, I don't just do what I personally would need to do to solve the problem. I do everything that I'm doing in my head on paper. And so it takes a little while longer to write all that down, which is okay because that just buys you more time to do the problems, right? And if you need it, you have it. And if you don't need it, well, then that's okay. You just submit the test when you're done taking it. Okay, this one is a little different. It's got a fraction here. So we know in order to get rid of fractions, we have to multiply every single term by the common denominator. In this case, there's only one denominator. So I'm gonna multiply every single term by eight, including the term on the right-hand side of the equation, the zero. So here the eights will cancel. I get one x squared. Here I get minus eight x 
And what is 8 times 16? 120. And 8 times 0 is still 0. So 1 times 128. Let's see. Square root of 128 is 11 something. And square root of 36 was 6, and the square root of 9 was 3. I just wanted to write that on there because I said it, but I didn't write it. So 128, um, 64, not 3, um, 32, not 5. Not six, not seven. I have sixteen, not nine, not ten, and not eleven. Okay, so those are it. Now the middle number is negative, so the big column is going to be negative. But in order for me to get a, oh, this is a positive times a negative, so this should have been negative one twenty. So in order for us to get a negative when we multiply, that means the smaller column would have had to have been a positive. And which of these will give me eight? It looks like this group will give me that negative eight. So I'm gonna split this negative eight X. I have X squared, positive eight X, negative 16 X, and then negative 128. And then if I group it right here after the first two, this side has an X in common. I have to bring down the minus. And if I want an X plus eight in the second parentheses, what needs to go here? It looks like a 16. Negative 16 times X is negative 16 X. Negative 16 times negative eight is a negative 128. So I have the X plus eight in common, leaving me with the X minus 16 in the other parentheses. And then the zero factor property means this one should equal zero or this one should equal zero. So if I minus eight on both sides, I get this equation. If I add 16 on both sides, I get positive 16. So in this case, we have two solutions, negative eight and 16. Okay, before I carry on, just wanted to leave that up there for a moment. And then we can go on to number 25. We're making our way. 9x squared minus 49 equals to zero. So this is the difference of two perfect squares this being uh, 3x squared and this being 7 squared. So if I factor it, it's 3x minus 7 and 3x plus 7. And you could FOIL that out to make sure that it's factored correctly, but I trust my factoring, so I'm just going to keep going with what I have here. So I would take this one equal to 0. Um, or this one equals to zero. And then if I solve this equation, I will get x equals seven thirds. And if I solve this equation, I'll get x equals negative seven thirds. Okay. And so I have two solutions here. 26. We have x squared equals 49. This one says solve by extracting roots. And then lift both the exact solution and its approximate solutions, okay? Um, so here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the square root of both sides to extract the roots. But when I introduce the square root, I automatically am going to get a plus or minus. So the square root and the square will cancel, leaving you with just x. And then you have the square root of 49 over here on this side. However, there is an exact answer for the square root of 49, and it's just seven. 
So I have two answers. I have negative seven and positive seven. Now in the computer, it just so happens that there's no approximation. So smaller value would be negative seven here. And for the approximation, it would also be a negative seven. Positive seven down here and positive seven here. It's the exact same thing, okay? If it doesn't like negative seven and square root of, and positive seven here, you can type negative square root of 49, and then over here, just the negative seven. And then over here, square root of 49, and then just the positive seven, okay? Now let's go ahead and look at number 27. We have 9x squared equal to 225. It says to solve it by extracting roots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this as 3x squared. And if I could not write this as 3x squared, what I would have done is I would have divided both sides by 9 to get the x squared by itself. And I just want to show you that regardless of which way you did it, you will still come up with the same answer. Let me see if 2, 2 over 9 reduces. It does, actually. This just becomes 25. Okay. And so either way, from here or from here, you would extract your roots, giving you plus or minus. Extract your roots, giving you plus or minus. So here I would have the three X by itself and the square root of two, two, five is 15. And here I would get X equals plus or minus five. And so if I divide both sides by three over here, I do get that plus or minus five, which is the same thing here. So you have two solutions, five and negative five, okay? So whether you recognize that that was a perfect square and then extracted roots, or whether you just divided by the coefficient to get the x squared by itself and then extracted roots, you still get the same result, okay? Um, and then again, you would just put negative five and negative five, and then positive five and positive five, because we haven't come to the point yet where we end up with radicals still left in our answers. So here is another one. So we have extracting roots again. Um, so let's go. Well, this is already something squared. So let's go ahead and extract the root. So we have square root of 81 is 9. This will go away, leaving me with the x minus 6. If I add 6 to both sides, I end up with a positive six plus or minus nine. That means six equal or x equals six plus nine, and then x equals six minus nine. So this means x is equal to 15 or negative three, okay? And again, these are exact answers. So you would just enter negative three here, negative three there, positive three here, positive three there, okay? Um, we have not run into any just yet that are not perfect, but that can happen, okay? Um, and it may happen in this next couple of problems, but if it were to happen on one of these, um, I, wanted to show, I wanted to show you how you would figure out your smaller number. So let's say for instance, we did this and this number was not a perfect square, okay? If you had, this is just an example, okay? Let's say I had x minus six squared equal to um, 15, okay? So when I go to take the square root, I'm going to get x minus six by itself and then plus or minus the square root of 15. Now there is no square root of 15 and it cannot be simplified. So it stays just like that. And then if I add the six over, I get positive six plus or minus the square root of 15. This kind of answer is what those boxes were intended for because you get six plus square root of 15 and then six minus square root of 15. 
These are what the exact answers look like, okay? And then if you want the decimals, you would type in your calculator six plus square root of 15 and get that decimal. So 9.8, how many places does it tie it around to? Two decimal places. So 9.87, and then this one would be, um, 2.13. So that means that this number would be the one that goes on the smaller. So this number would go on the top and then it's decimal on the top. And then this, um, the one with the plus would go under the larger value and then this under the rounded larger value. So essentially, if that was not 81, right? If that 81 was a 15 instead, then my answers would have been six minus the square root of 15. And then over here, I would have had the 2.13. And then six plus square root of 15. And then the nine. Now that's not the correct answer for my number 28 because my number 28 gave me 81, not 15, right? But I just wanted to give you an example of what it would look like if we didn't have a perfect square, okay? Okay, number 29, because your numbers, they're automatically generated, those red digits. Anytime you see red on my screen for the numbers, it's because those are randomly generated. And when they're randomly generated, if that 81 is randomly generated, it may not be a perfect square the next time it's generated, okay? So I don't know if you'll get perfect squares for all the problems like I did. So I just wanted to give you an example of what happens when it's not a perfect square. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm just trying to keep my voice. Mm. I can feel it getting um, hoarse. I think that's the word, dry. And when it starts to feel scratchy like that, that's my know I'm going to start sounding funny. Um, okay. So this one says to solve the quadratic equation by completing the square. So I do need to follow the instructions. And just FYI, when you're taking the test, um, it will be a lot like the way I asked for the extra credit where when I'm asking for you to complete the square, you have to write the step that you got after completing the square and then the solution. Because I need to make sure that you are actually completing the square. Um, and so in order to get the credit for that kind of problem, you will have to show me what you get after you complete the square and then what you get after you solve, okay? So let's go ahead and go with this one. Now, first thing is, is that I just want the first two terms by themselves. So I am gonna minus 30 on both sides and that's gonna give me a negative 30 on the right-hand side. Then I don't want a number in front here, but there isn't one, so I'm safe. I don't need to divide by anything. Okay, but then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 12x and I'm gonna add that positive 12 over two squared. And I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side, positive 12 over two squared. Now, if it were a fraction, I'd be doing one half. I'd be writing it like, I guess I can write it like that, even when it's not a fraction. One half times positive 12 so really that is going to be um, a six squared so over here i know it's going to factor into x and then whatever's inside here. So since inside is a positive six, I'm gonna put plus six. It has nothing to do with that sign. It has to do with what's inside the parentheses, okay? And inside the parentheses, I have plus six, so it's positive six, so it's plus six. And over here, this is negative 30 plus 36, which is just a positive six. 
right? If you want, you can erase that and actually square the six to give you 36. Okay, now that I have this, I can extract the roots. So I'm gonna square root, square root, and I get x plus six equals plus or minus because I introduced the square root, square root of six. Now this is not perfect, it does not come out of the house. So if my minus six on both sides, I get negative six plus or minus the square root of six. And what does it tell me to do? It says, completing the square, enter your answers as a comma separated list. If an answer does not exist, enter D &E. No, it does not. We're not gonna enter D &E because we do have two answers. It's negative six plus square root of six and then negative six minus square root of six. So this is what you would type in that box. Okay, number 30. We have four X squared minus two X minus six equal to zero. So again, completing the square. So I'm gonna add the six over. Becomes positive six. Then I'm gonna divide by this coefficient because I cannot have a number in front of X squared. So I'm gonna have X squared minus, oh, this is gonna be one half X. And then this is gonna be three halves. So what do I add to both sides? I'm going to add one half times negative one half squared. And then I'm just going to do the computation on the inside. I get negative one fourth squared, right? So this side will factor into X and whatever's in the parentheses, negative one fourth squared. And then over here, I can figure out what that is. That would be three halves plus one sixteenth, which is going to be 25 over 16. I could have typed this whole thing in the calculator and got 25 over 16, but I just did it in pieces. I usually use a calculator as little as possible just because it takes me more time to go use the calculator than it does to just do it in my head sometimes. So now that I have something squared equal to a number, I'm going to extract the roots. So I get X minus one fourth without the square in the parentheses, plus or minus, and the square root of 25 is five, and the square root of 16 is four. Then I'm gonna add one fourth to both sides. So I'm gonna end up with X equal to positive one fourth plus or minus five fourths which is equal to one fourth plus five fourths and one fourth minus five fourths. So that would be six fourths and negative four fourths, which is equivalent to three halves and negative one. And so those are my two solutions. Making headway, making headway. We have about 15 more problems and they won't be, I don't think, as long as these. The factoring ones and the completing the square ones really do take a long time. So let's keep going. Number 31. This one has the square root of 25 and the cube root of 343 over 125. So we know that the square root of 25 is just five. And because the square root was given, we didn't introduce it. You do not put plus or minus. It's just, if this is a positive radical, then you have a positive solution. For this, we're gonna separate this into the cube root of 343 and the cube root of 125. And if you type this expression in a calculator, you get seven. If you type this expression in a calculator, you get five. Now for number 32. So this one was A and this one was B. Now for 32, A is the cube root of 27 and B is the square root of 49 cubed. So if you type cube root of 27 in the calculator, you just get three. Here, square root of 49 is seven. 
And then seven cubed is 343. So let's keep going. Here we have square root of 12 times square root of three. And here we have the eighth root of five X to the fourth to the eighth. Okay. Now, um, here we'll multiply what's on the inside. So we get the square root of 36 and the square root of 36 is just six. Now here, the eight and the eight will cancel. The only thing we have to be careful with is whenever we have even radicals and there's variables on the inside, you do get the absolute value of that, okay? Now five is five, it's always positive five. So really you just need to make sure that you have the absolute value of the variable part. However, x to the fourth means that you're taking a number times itself four times. So if x is positive, you have a positive times a positive times a positive times a positive, which is positive. So if x were positive, it's okay. You wouldn't need the bars. But if it, And if x were negative, you would also end up with the positive. So you truly do not need those bars around the x to the fourth either. Okay. Now, if for some reason one of these ended up being positive and the other one ended up being negative, then you could not remove the bars. You would have to leave the bars in your final answer. Okay. So 34. Um, A is the square root of 20, and B is the cube root of 375. So for these, um, I believe the computer will simplify the square root of 20. And it's two square root of five. So that one's nice. But if I try to do the cube root of 375, it does not simplify that for me, okay? So I will need to do that one using the primes. So 375, if I divide that by five, I get 75, which I can divide by five again. And I get 15, which I can divide by five again, and I get three. So all of these are my prime factors. So I have one, two, three fives, and then a three, but only one, okay? Now I can split this. Okay, and then the threes can cancel and I just have five. But here you cannot simplify the cube root of three. So this is what the final answer will look like. Now 35 has the cube root of eight. Now they don't want me to actually take the cube root of eight and tell them it's two. They want you to write it in its rational exponent form. So the exponent here is one. And if I use the rule, it's gonna be the base with the exponent over the index. And so this is what they want. Here we have X 15 and then the square root of X. So if we, X 15 is in exponent form, but this one is not. So if we take the exponent and divide it by the index, we have an exponent of one half. And when you multiply two x's together, you add their exponents. So five plus one half, I'm sorry, 15 plus one half is going to be 31 over two. And so this is what they want. Now 37 has this expression and they want you to write it in radical form. So the first thing you have to do for me personally is get rid of that negative. Now remember this five is not in parentheses. So this exponent does not apply to this five. If it had parentheses around the five X, then it would apply to the five, but it's not. So the five is just there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert this. So five times that, it'll be five times one over X to the positive eight ninths. Um, and if you put this over one, it's just five over x eight over nine. 
And then that can be written as a radical. It'll have an index of nine, but it'll have an exponent of eight. And so this is what they want as their final answer. We're getting there, we're getting there. Um, I wanna see if the calculator would do some of these problems because if it can, that cuts out a lot of work for you, right? So let's see, 49 raised to the negative three over two. I just typed it in exactly the way it is on number 38A. And oh, well, it tells me automatically one over three, four, three. Now this is not as easy when there's letters in there, but while there's no letters, you can take advantage of your calculator. But if you wanted to know how to do it by hand, you basically get rid of that negative exponent by saying one over 49 to the three halves. Then what you do is you'd say this is one over the square root of 49 um, cubed. And then what you can do is you can actually choose to write the cube on the outside instead of on the inside. So you can write it like this. And then you end up with seven cubed, which is where the 343 came from. Okay. Similarly for this one, I could type it in the calculator, but if I take care of the negative, what it's going to do is it's going to swap this fraction over and then it'll be positive. And then remember one half just means the square root. So I get seven over four. You can type that in the calculator, parentheses 16 fraction 49, close the parentheses exponent one fraction two. And it tells you it's four. Oh, I forgot to flip it. No, did I do something wrong? 16 over 49. Oh, I did do something wrong. That's supposed to enter a negative exponent, that's why. Negative one half. Now it looks like the original problem, and I do get seven points. Okay, now we're getting into the last six problems, seven problems. I might need another paper. So we're on number 39 now. So we have three plus the square root of negative 49. Now we already know it says write the complex number in standard form. We already know that this negative is going to come out as an I. So the I is over here on the side, not inside the house anymore then the square root of 49 is just seven. And so this is in its standard form. So again, the 125 will stay, but the negative will come out as an I and it comes completely out of the house. And the square root of 125 is five radical five, but again with the I on the side. Now number 41 has 12 minus 5i plus negative 2 plus 8i. So I have a 1 here that I distribute and I get 12 minus 5i. I have a positive 1 here that if I distribute I get negative 2 plus 8i. If I combine my like terms I get 10 plus 3i. And that is in standard form. Real part plus or minus the imaginary part. Getting to the last few problems. Four plus four i minus six plus 19 i. Again, distribute that one, I get four plus four i. Distribute this negative one, we get negative six, negative 19 i. Combine our like terms we can get negative 2 minus 15i, and that is in standard form. Um, here we have 4 minus 3i, and then 2 minus 2i. So we are multiplying, 
So anytime we multiply two binomials, we're going to take the first number and distribute, and then take the second number and distribute. So I get 8 minus 8i minus 6i plus 6i squared. Now I can combine the two i's together to get negative 14i. And this i squared is going to change that sign. So it's going to be negative 6. So if I combine my real numbers together, I get 2 minus 14i. And this is in the standard form. Um, 44. We have negative 6i times 9 plus 4i. So I'm just distributing. I get negative 54i and a negative 24i squared. This i squared will change this to a positive. But this is not in standard form. The real part needs to be in the front and the negative part, the I, imaginary part needs to be in the back. So now it's in standard form. Okay. So we're gonna go on to number five, but I'm gonna go back to the top of the page. So I'm just leaving this here for a second so you can grab that. And then I'm gonna slide back up to the top and do 45. So we have two minus six i. Now what it says is it says write the complex conjugate. So we know that the conjugate is gonna be the same guys, but with the opposite sign in the middle. So that's one answer. Then it says multiply the number by its complex conjugate. So two minus six i times its conjugate, two plus six i. So we're gonna distribute the two and then we're gonna distribute the negative six i. So we get four plus 12 i, negative 12 i, negative 36 i squared. These guys are gonna cancel this i squared. It's gonna change that sign. So you get four plus 36, which is 40. And so that will go in the second box. Now 46. Um, this one says nine plus i over nine minus i. And it says write the quotient in standard form. So if we recall from 1.5, that means that we will need to multiply by the conjugate of the bottom. So the conjugate of the bottom is nine plus i. And whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do the exact same thing to the top. So that means I have to foil these out and I have to foil those out or distribute. So nine times nine is 81. Nine times i is nine i. i times nine is nine i. And i times i is i squared for the bottom. Nine times nine is 81. Nine times nine i is nine i. Negative i times nine is negative nine i. And negative i times i is negative i squared. So um, I'm going to combine these and this is gonna turn into a negative one. And then I'm gonna combine these, they actually cancel. And this is gonna actually turn it into a positive one. So essentially this is what's happening. I'm gonna do it in steps and then I'll explain in a minute. So I would have gone from here to here, but I wanted to show you why it is, okay? So this is a negative one, but times a plus would be a negative one. This is a negative one, but times a negative would be a positive one, okay? I just didn't wanna go straight to here and then it not be clear as to why, but you can see it here now, why? Now that would mean this is 80 plus 18i over 82. And then you would split the fraction, put the i on the side, and then reduce both of those um, expressions. So this is 40 over 41 plus. 
um, 9 over 41 with an I. And this is in standard form. Thought maybe I could squeeze all 49 on this page, but I guess not. Okay, 47 I can fit here. So 47 has this expression and it wants us to multiply by the conjugate of the bottom. So remember, this is like zero plus i. So what's the conjugate? Zero minus two i, or just negative two i, right? You don't need to write the zero. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm taking a binomial times a monomial, which means I'm basically distributing. And here I just have a monomial times a monomial. So we end up with negative 12i, negative 24i squared over negative 4i squared. So these i squared will change those signs. So this will become negative 12i plus 24 and negative 4. So if I divide each one by negative 4, oh, no, nope, it would become a positive 4. The negative and the negative will become positive. And then plus 24 over 4. So we get negative 3i plus 6, which is not in standard form. It should be 6 minus 3i. And now we have it in standard form. Okay, we got one, two more problems. And then we are done with the entire review. So 48 is x squared plus 6x plus 10 equal to zero. Now, actually, these two problems I need to remove from the review, so these will not be on the review anymore. Um, so the review will stop at 47 because we have not talked about the quadratic formula. That's actually not going to be addressed until the next test, okay? So I'm going to remove these two problems on here, and I'm just going to write down the codes for them so I know which ones to delete. So your review should end at number 20, at 47, okay? But that's the end of the review. I will choose problems very similar to these. Again, they're randomly generated. So they will be similar, but they won't be the exact numbers. Um, it would be pure coincidence if you get the exact number that you saw in your review or one of the exact numbers that you saw when I did the review, okay? Um, but other than that, that is the whole entire unit one review. So make sure you study all of these kinds of problems on this review and good luck to everybody. But thanks, bye-bye.